Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Hello, hi, how are you? Welcome from wherever you are watching. Um, we have got a lot of fun stuff to chat about today. It's a little bit of a slow week in travel, but um, nonetheless, we've got some uh, fun stuff going on. Um, so thanks for tuning in today. Um, let me know, it is bright and sunny, a beautiful day here in Vancouver, Canada. And um, we are going to be reaching highs of 18 Celsius in the next um, couple of days. 18 Celsius uh, to Fahrenheit is about 65 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, so let me know what's your next couple of days looking like. Are you through the winter or are you still <laughs> fighting it? Um, let me know. I'm curious. Um, also, okay, so let me show you the topic. So this is what we are covering off today. So we do have one Canadian topic, um, but uh, we've also got some other cool stuff. And uh, I have another game for you because that was kind of fun last week. Um, so we are going to go ahead with that. Um, Angelo, head <laughs> yeah, this is a question everybody wants to know. When am I heading down to Hyatt Vivid? Well, I'm leaving on Monday for Cancun. And then I will be staying there for a week. I am going to hopefully um, take the new Mayan train down to Playa del Carmen for the day. Um, super excited to see how that goes. I think it's going to be a bit of a pain, quite frankly, to do that from Cancun. Um, but I, I think it'll be really interesting to see what it's like. There's some... Uh, conflicting information about whether or not you can take luggage on it or not, um, or whether it's just a small bag. So I don't know. We'll see if like a carry-on size bag would work, um, but that would be a potentially a heck of a better way to get down to your Playa del Carmen area resort um, compared to sitting in traffic, because we all know that the traffic um, through Puerto Morales and into Playa del Carmen is always a bit of a hassle. Um, so we've got some fun stuff. I've got some fun stuff planned for the first week that I'm there. And then on April 30th, I will be heading to the Hyatt Vivid. What I'm really, so, and I'll be there for uh, a week. And what I'm really surprised at is the fact that um, there still are no decent videos on this property. So... <laughs> Um, I've already been in touch with the resort. I'm already coordinating with their social media people and will be um, trying to find out uh, as much as I can about the property. Um, Christine Tazone, if you're watching, um, I'm hoping to meet up with you in Cancun. I know you'll be staying at the Ibero Star across the street. Um, and um, so, yeah, hopefully we can meet up and chat. Um, I'm going to try to see a few different rooms at the property that will probably be on May the 1st. Um, because I am curious about this whole open bath, open concept bathroom. Um, I know they're going to have glass and a lot of frosted glass. I'm curious as to how private that will be. And also uh, between the different rooms, if you get a basic room compared to a vantage club room, um, compared to some of the suites, if there is a difference. Um, if they have some open concept bathrooms and some resorts that will be more um, enclosed, then um, that will be, uh, you know, that, I think that's fine. As long as you know which category to book. Um, uh, hopefully you can take the suitcases. Yeah, I know. Um, if you cannot, then I'm not sure that it's going to get as much um, action and activity, I think, as uh, as one would hope. Um, but we'll see. You know, it, might, it just might be a neat way to get around. Um, Oh, you're going to be there as well. Okay. Well, you know what I look like. So come and say hi if you see me. Um, I will probably be up filming quite early. Um, I'll want to, you know, film the pools and stuff like that um, before there's people around so that I can show the pools without worrying about filming other hotel guests. Um, so, yeah, and I'll, I'll be curious to see what you think. What kind of room are you booking in, Angelo? I am in a Vantage Club golf view room, I think. I changed, I changed it a couple of times because <laughs> the rates were really low. Um, and so uh, I booked it direct through the, the hotel. Um, a lot of tour operators will not even offer new hotels when they first open. Um, and I will say that, you know, looking at the reviews um, on Google and stuff like that, they're really hit and miss. It's either five star all the way or people are having some issues. And that's 
honestly, that's to be expected when a resort first open up opens up because they always have growing pains. Um, so, you know, we'll have to we'll have to see. Um, oh, okay. I'm curious which fan page that is. Um, Tony, can you post a link to that in the comments on this video? Um, Cause I'd be curious to check it out. I've been looking, like I said, there's no decent videos in my opinion. Um, and by decent, I mean longer than 60 seconds and not um, vertical. To me, I wanna see, you know, a, a this way video where I can, you know, actually see what's going on. Um, I'm also going to be doing a 360 video. So, you know, I mean, we'll see. Um, the thing with that, like, the thing that I really, I mentioned this last week, the thing that I really don't like that about that is that it is, um, I, I don't like that I can't see any of your comments. So if you're like, hey, wait, go back and show me this, I can't see it. I won't be able to see it until afterwards. If um, the, the positive thing, though, is that whilst I'm, you know, walking around going, oh, look at here, blah, 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 I can be walking around going one way thinking, OK, well, now I'm going to walk out to the pool. And meanwhile, you're like, hey, wait, what was that over there? If you're watching, you can actually turn your phone or if you're watching on a computer, you can use your mouse to change the direction of the camera and you can actually switch it to view whatever you want. Um, I will say that on a, a computer, otherwise I think the video looks, it looked a bit rubbish to me because it's trying to compress a 360 video onto a, a one dimensional screen. But um, anyways, uh, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Uh, but yeah, yeah, definitely going to be um, um, doing a whole bunch of stuff. And I want to basically going to show you everything. So we'll see how that goes. Okay, Angelo, Premium Junior Sweet Golf U King without advantage. Okay, okay. Well, I'm curious uh, as to what that will look like. Like I said, I'm gonna try to see as many rooms as I can and video as many of them as I can. So I'll have to try to make arrangements for that. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, the beach club is wonderful. Oh, that's good, good, yeah. Um, I, I, and I'm curious, like how far away is it from the hotel? You know, like I've heard 15, 20 minutes. I don't, physically think it takes that long. I mean, it might for some people, but I'm curious um, just to see how far the distance is from the hotel to the actual road. And then on the, on the, on across the road to Playa Delphine, uh, where exactly is the beach club? Is it at the north end of the beach? Is it at the south end? Is it in the middle? I don't know. I, uh, and Google maps, Bing maps, none of them seem to have uh, done any recent, um, indicators of where this is. Um, so yeah, Tony, if you can post uh, a link to that um, Facebook group, that would be great because I would love to check that out. I think I'm in a couple right now, but um, the ones that I'm in, they're not posting much. Um, so maybe it's people who are going to go, but they're not going there yet. So we shall see. So yeah, that'd be great. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and get started. Um, yeah, and I'll be there. Uh, I will be there just for the one week. Um, but, uh, <laughs> I've absolutely nothing planned for that week other than checking out the hotel, um, trying out all the food and, um, um, yeah, just video, 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 video. So we will talk about that, um, uh, a little bit. Um, on the height for Michelle. Oh, okay. Hi. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Yeah, it's always nice to sort of stalk people <laughs> on these Facebook groups so that it's like, oh, hey, I actually uh, recognize you. That's kind of cool. Um, yeah, so it'll be fun to um, meet up and, and see what you think of, of everything. So yeah, but if, if one of you can post the link to that Facebook group, that would be great. I would be very grateful for that. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, so WestJet Enhanced Economy, again, sorry if you're watching this, but if you happen to be flying to Vancouver, then at least you can see, um, you could maybe check out flying on WestJet. Um, so I'm um, not unlike uh, Air Canada and, and pretty much all the other major airlines, um, WestJet has decided to add a an additional class of service. So right now they have economy and they have premium on the majority of their planes. If you're talking transatlantic, uh, you know, from 
well, Calgary. Uh, they've oh, they modified a lot of stuff. So now uh, Calgary has always been their hub, but now they have a lot of flights that are just from Calgary. Um, so if you're flying Calgary to London, England, or anywhere else in Europe, um, those also offer business class seats. I think the premium economy seats are perfect. Um, they're, a, well, depending on the plane, they're usually a two by two config. So um, you've got your own private seat area. If you're traveling with, uh, if you're, you, you're traveling, com your travel companion, you kind of have that special area all to yourselves, buckets of leg room, um, food, drinks, like alcoholic drinks. It's like nonstop. Um, uh, you get hot meals, you get snacks. And actually I find their food is, is good, but I'm a weirdo. Like I actually, <laughs> I kind of like airplane food. Um, I'm impressed that at 30,000 feet, they can serve you a hot meal and, and fresh cookies on some air airlines. Um, so, you know, it's kind of cool. Anyway, so they've added this, uh, extended, um, uh, class of seat. And so, um, with, um, the enhanced economy, what you basically get with that is you get, you do get extra legroom seats. So obviously they're going to have to revamp some of their planes um, to add that extra legroom. You get priority boarding, uh, which is uh, interesting because um, now this is zone two, not zone one, zone two. So zone one would be anybody who's um, I think silver, gold, or platinum status with WestJet, as well as anybody who's sitting sitting in premium or uh, business class. Um, but nonetheless, you're getting zone two. So out of four zones, uh, you are getting in ahead of a lot of the other people, which means to say you're going to have early access to the overhead bins. Uh, we all know, I mean, with WestJet, you're supposed to have one, one carry-on and one personal item. We all know that what most people define that as is two large bags, which of course then they want in the overhead bins because you know God forbid they should have those at their feet. Um, so it's unfortunate because it, it does uh, it, it does uh, use up a lot of the space in the overhead bins, um, which means there's not a lot of space left for everybody else. Um, a distinct section at the front of economy uh, comp complimentary alcoholic beverage during the flight, which is quite nice. And then obviously a quicker exit upon arrival because, um, well, you know, as you know, um, when you exit the plane, it's row by row by row. So being closer to the front, um, you know, just means that you are going to get, you're going to get off earlier than if you're at the back of the plane. So this, you know, some benefits to it. Um, I'm not really sure. I haven't seen much in the way of pricing to indicate what that's going to look like. But, um, you know, nonetheless, if you aren't prepared to spend all the extra on premium um, or into business class, then at least you are getting some perks. So that's kind of nice. Um, so, yeah, some benefits there. Gig tripping. <laughs> I don't know if any of you have heard of this before. I, you know, we've got gig tripping, we've got cool cations coming up. You know, I think sometimes they do news stories with these fancy words and they think, oh, people will actually, it'll cause them to read the story because they don't know what it is. Um, that was me. <laughs> That's why I read the story. So essentially what it is, is um, it's people who are traveling in order to see um, um, fans planning travel around um, either music tours or like concerts, that kind of thing. Um, so, for example, if you wanted to see Taylor Swift, um, you know, the, the tickets that went for sale here in Vancouver, um, I think they were sold out before they were for sale, if you know what I mean. You know, American Express, you get the pre-purchase, all that kind of stuff. And so um, what people are doing is they're traveling to other places where um, maybe there's less Taylor Swift fans and um, where tickets might still be available. And they're, they're going to these places to watch her concerts. And really, this could be the same for any group. Um, you know, there was uh, the, in the article I was reading there where they were talking about um, Grateful Dead um, uh, fans who were basically going on the road in order to watch them as many times as they possibly could. So, you know, it's, it's kind of a fun concept, but at the same time, it's also, um, uh, you know, I mean, 
if you really love the band, then why not? You know, why, why not go and, and uh, on the road to um, to check them out? I mean, obviously, you want to book your hotel as far as possible in advance so that you can get a decent rate on that. But sometimes it might be an interesting way to go and see someplace new that you weren't, you know, that might have made it might have been in your top 50 list of places to go to, but certainly not your top. 10 or top 20 even. Uh, but if it is an opportunity to see somewhere different and also for you to get to see the artist or the concert that you want to see uh, without breaking the bank, then yeah, kind of an interesting concept. So that's happening. Um, and then moving on to coolcations, um, this is where uh, places like Sweden are expecting a massive, massive um, increase in summer travel because they are predicting that people will want to vacation away from the hot places. So, for example, people who decide, you know, maybe they want to go see Spain or Portugal um, during the summer when the kids are out of school, but also that's when it's like boiling hot. So, Conversely, they're looking at traveling to places that are a little bit cooler, like Sweden and neighboring countries. So they're predicting, they, they say that the search queries have gone up 21%. So, you know, there's definitely an increase that way. Uh, so, you know, that might be something to consider. Uh, also, bear in mind, if you are looking at going to those places in, his, in the previous years, they have been very inexpensive to go to in summer. If this is the trend, get booking now because uh, if this does pick up, you know, whether it's because they keep talking about, oh, look, lots of people are going to book it. I mean, you can make these things happen, right? Just by virtue of if you say it enough times, then it becomes trendy and people will start to book it. So um, uh, yeah, uh, book now, <laughs> book now so that the prices are better. Um, friends who do that, Never knew it was called gig traveling. Yeah, it, yeah, like I said, um, sometimes they just give these things names just so that uh, it's kind of hip and trendy. I don't know. <laughs> so um, what do you want to see? So this is, uh, again, you know, I don't mean to like beat a dead horse on this, but, you know, going to the Hyatt Vivid uh, within the next two weeks I'm curious what you guys want to see. Um, like I said, so I'm thinking I will go live uh, Wednesday. That will be, uh, what's my dates? Wednesday the, oh, the first. Oh, interesting. Hmm. I have to figure that out. So, yeah, I will go live on Wednesday, but it will be um, kind of tricky because that will kind of be my first full day. I do want to go live, but I also want to see a bunch of different rooms. Um, so I'll have to see how that plays out. I'll probably change the time because uh, 10 a.m., my normal 10 a.m. Pacific time uh, is like one in the afternoon and there's no way I'm going to find quiet areas on um, <clears throat> at one o'clock. So I have to go a lot earlier. Oh, well, hello, Miss Roxanne. Nice to see you. Thanks for popping by and saying hello. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm curious what you want to see. Um, obviously, I'll do all the usual. So I'll do one video on the buffet for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I'll probably do another on just the food. Um, and I'll try to do videos as much as I can of how the food tastes, what it looks like, all that kind of stuff. Um, getting the sense that this is very much a grab and go kind of place, which I like. Uh, also like the sit down meals because you got to fill your day up somehow. And, uh, you know, uh, so and it's, it's just trying to find it a little bit more relaxing if you have a menu and, you know, server and all that kind of stuff. Um, excuse me. Also because of the interaction of it all. So we'll have to see how that goes. Um, so, uh, yeah, do that, the food, um, the rooms, obviously, uh, pool areas, as well as the beach club. Um, and, uh, what else? Uh, also just that walk to and from the, uh, the main road. Uh, of course you all know that the buses run like nonstop 24 seven and they're like, 
uh, I think a dollar a ride or less than a dollar a ride. So that's a really easy way to get up to the main areas. If you want to go to Coco Bongo, Plaza La Isla, uh, Plaza Cujucan, do some shopping, that kind of thing. It's uh, very easy to get there on the bus or taxis, Uber, all of that is available. Um, so I'll have to see what that's like. And um, yeah, I think those are the main things. Oh, also the activities. Oh my gosh. Uh, like the um, beach tennis, the neon volleyball, the pottery classes. I'm so excited for the pottery classes uh, as well as the pastry classes. I got to say those are my top two um, most excited the activities I'm most excited about. Um, and then also, you know, they're going to have a bunch of different parties, like say parties on the beach. Is that going to be at the beach club? I don't know. I thought the beach club was only open until 6 PM. So, um, I don't know, uh, but we shall see. So, yeah, I mean, if, if there's anything you're curious about, let me know. Um, and I will film it. I'm thinking for the Wednesday that I'll go live, you know, sort of walking around with my phone and showing you things and, or I might go live with the Insta360 first. I'm not sure. Um, so if you guys have any suggestions or recommendations, let me know. Again, if I'm walking around with the Insta, you can control what you see, but I can't interact with you at all. So I do prefer walking around with my phone because as I'm walking, I can actually see, oh, somebody wants to know if they what kind of gin they have. And I wouldn't know offhand because I don't drink gin. But I could go and check. Um, somebody might want to know what time the pools are open till or if the pools are warm enough to swim in. Um, that has been a complaint. Um, and I think that maybe they weren't quite ready for the heating systems to be working. I don't know. Um, also, if it's warm enough, they don't usually turn the pool heat on. Um, but uh, I mean, it shouldn't be freezing cold, but I will find out when I get there. Um, and, uh, yeah, stuff like that. So at least if I'm walking around with my phone, I can see your questions as I go. So that will be on definitely on Wednesday, May the 1st. So be sure to tune in for that. Uh, and of course you can always watch it later on if you so choose. And I will be there until the 7th. Uh, doo -doo. I will be there until... Tuesday, May 7th, and then probably on the Wednesday, <laughs> I'll be jet lagged and whatever else. But nonetheless, I will probably um, uh, go live and just do a Q&A on the Hyatt Vivid. So if you have any questions about what the experience was like, all of that, I'll be answering all of those questions. Um, you know, it, it, the Hyatt Vivid is going is is adults only the dreams resort that's going to be co-located is going to be family friendly. Um, so, you know, it is, it is an option for everybody in the sense that, you know, families can stay at the dreams. So that's not going to be open until probably later this year. Again, I'll find out more once I get there. Um, but it'll be interesting to see what it's like, but it just sounds like a fun property. I love, love, love this concept of all these different and unique activities. And uh, I, I haven't, I've been bad lately. I haven't taken my gym clothes um, with me on vacation. I don't know. Do you guys take your gym clothes? Do you plan to work out? Um, for some people, I know they think, look, they're on vacation. So they actually have time to work out. So they do. Other people think, yes, I have time to work out. But I also have time to lay by the pool and read a book that I don't normally have time for. Or even just sit there by the pool and, and catch up on Netflix or something or sleep in and lay in bed and watch Netflix. I mean, whatever it's vacation time. It's time to recharge, rewind, um, you know, and, and unwind and, um, you know, just relax. So, you know, to each their own, but I'm curious, you know, does anybody, anybody watching, do they take, do you take gym clothes? Um, and do you work out? Um, do you head to the gym? Uh, um, Angelo is saying, take your gym clothes, but they don't get used daily. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Yeah, but at least you take them. And I think that the the reason I, I asked this in the first place is because I think that some of the exercise stuff that they're going to have is going to be pretty funky. I was super impressed by the Hyatt Ziva Zalara Cap Cana over in Punta Cana, Dominican Republic, um, with their gym. It was absolutely massive. It's the big, biggest gym I've ever seen anywhere in the Caribbean. And, um, 
it just it it got you excited about working out because they had such interesting stuff. You kind of feel like a kid in a play in a playground where it's like, oh, I want to try that. Oh, I want to try that. And um, you know, if they can make working out fun, then phew, that's a win for me any day of the week. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I've got some cable exercises they're going to do. I, I don't really know. Um, but I'm I'm kind of curious about it, and I think I'll really regret it if I don't take my gym clothes. So um, I'm assuming that Angela, you're going to bring it on this trip um, to check out all their different uh, gym-related physical activities. So yeah, maybe I'll run into you there. It should be fun. Um, yeah. So uh, I'm curious what you want to see. So let me know. I will go ahead and. I'm going to post next week's live uh, right after the show finishes. And so you can go ahead and start commenting. I'll, actually, I'll, I'll do both of them. I'll set up the following week's one as well. On either one of those, you can comment before the sh the, uh, the broadcast starts. And you can um, go ahead and, and write in there what you want to see, uh, if there's anything in particular. Or if you have any food allergies or dietary concerns, let me know. I have no problem asking the questions. Um, basically, I'm going to go there and, you know, answer the questions, help you figure out if this is the right resort for you, if this is the right destination for you. I assume everybody watching has been to Cancun. Is there anyone who's watching that has not been? Um, curious about that. I mean, I think by now most people have been. Everybody travels so much these days. Uh, but let me know if you if you have not been to Cancun. I'm I'm curious to see what kind of numbers those are. Um, anyway, so let me know what you want to see because uh, I am happy to adapt. I will also want to do a, a sort of a destination guide. So it'll be more like, um, again, you know, if you've never been to Cancun or you haven't been for a long time, or you're the type of person that goes to Cancun and you just go to the resort. Um, specifically, that's more like Mayan Riviera where you're not necessarily going to go to Cancun or that kind of thing. I'm going to talk about how to get around um, what the trains are, what the train is like, what the buses are like. Um, it's really fun places to go for drinks. Uh, I know Isla Mujeres Ferry Terminal is one for me. Um, I know there's a place that does a wicked mango margarita. Um, so it's fun just to sit there and have this big flipping massive margarita in a fishbowl kind of thing. And uh, they have a bungee cord thing there. So watching people do that, people just comment and going. So it's really good people watching. Uh, but there's a couple of places that I like for that. So um, I will share those with you. Um, um, but yeah, um, let me know if there's anything else you want to see. Okay, moving on. Let's play a game. Okay, so my game for this week, it's a true or false question. And it's related to, mm, you guessed it, Ken Quinn and the Minor Riviera. So... True or false, seaweed or sargassum season is from October, from April to October every year. True or false? Let me know what you think the answer to that is. True or false, seaweed or sargassum season is from April to October. And if you're watching this later on, you'll be able to... Um, Stick around, and the answer's coming up pretty soon. All right, we have Tammy who says false. Interesting. And Tammy, I know, well, I think the last time you were there was uh, when we went in December of 2021. So that's a bit of a tell. Uh, anyone else? Anyone, anyone? All right. So the answer is, oops, I should get rid of the comment. Yeah. Yeah, I think that was the last time. Tammy and I have been, well, and our families have been uh, traveling around a lot in the last year. Um, the last couple of the last time, um, <laughs> as long as we've known each other. <laughs> All right, so true or false? And the answer is ding, ding, ding. False. You can find sargassum in any month. I mean, yes, hurricane season runs from June 1st until November 30th. So with any time that there are storms, you will find that that tends to sort of blow the seaweed or sargassum in. 
So um, yes, it's more prevalent in those months or more like more more like more guaranteed to happen. Um, that said, uh, I mean, Tammy and I were in a Facebook group with over 15,000 travel agents from all around the world. And um, a few of them actually live down in the Cancun Mayan Riviera region. And it's interesting for them to post photos. And you'll see one day, you know, you get up on a, a Tuesday and they'll post a photo and they'll, well, more like they'll take a picture <laughs> of how bad the seaweed is and then get up on the Wednesday and this, the beaches are clear. There's no sargassum in the water at all. And they'll show like a, a you know, Tuesday and then a Wednesday photo side by side. And it's like, this is how varied it can be. Um, like I said, if there's storms coming in or if it's really windy, that's when you do tend to see a lot more um, of the seaweed of the sargassum that gets washed to shore. Um, so that's one thing to look at perhaps on the forecast. But I mean, you're either going or you're not going, right? Um, so uh, yeah, it, it can completely change. And I've been there in December. I think on that trip, actually, by the end of the week, uh, we were staying at Dreams Aventuras, or we used to be called Dreams Port Aventuras, uh, in uh, Port Aventuras, which is uh, south of south of Playa del Carmen, uh, but north of Tulum. So, so quite a ways from the airport, and uh, but closer to the new Tulum airport. And um, in that area, they actually built a rock barricade. the The resort is in sort of a key. Um, and they built a rock barrier to keep the seaweed out. Um, but there is one side of the resort that is directly facing the ocean. And in that area, there's, a, there's also a natural pool. And in that area, it was just literally full of sargassum, like covering the whole area. And that was in December. So, um, and honestly, like, the, I don't think there is a month that I have not um, been in Cancun, Mine, Riviera. I like through the years, I have literally been there every month of, of uh, every month, and I, you know, it's 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 rare that you don't see any seaweed or sargassum if we're going to be strictly accurate. Um, so it, you know it, it can happen at any time. But as I said, you could also go in May and it can be absolutely pristine. So there's no you know, set time. It's the same thing, arguably, with hurricane season. Hurricane season is June 1st to November 30th. However, I've been there in April before when a tropical storm rolled through. Um, they There was concern it was going to develop into a hurricane. Fortunately, it didn't. But um, nonetheless, uh, it didn't make for a great uh, opportunity to take photos and videos because nothing looks sexy when it's pouring rain. I mean, this is not what you guys want to see. You want to see the resorts when it's bright and sunny outside. So uh, rainy days are a day off for me. <laughs> well, actually, they're not because that's when I do the indoor stuff. Let's go see some rooms. Um, but it's unfortunate because then the views don't look great. But it is what it is. So, yeah, um, the answer is false. Sargassum can be seen in any month. So, you know, I was speaking with uh, a woman a couple of weeks ago. She's planning her uh, destination wedding for later this year. And she was a bit put off because, um, some people in this other Facebook group were saying, oh, well, you know, you can't go during this time because it's, it's sargassum season. And it's like, well, maybe, you know, but don't let that, don't let that be your guide. You know, it's something to be aware of, but it's not necessarily, um, a hard, fast rule. Uh, yeah, that's a really good point too. Uh, you can definitely, you can see tons of it in Puerto Morales and none of it in the hotel zone in Cancun. Um, oh, at the same time, at <laughs> the same time. Yeah, ah, I got, I got your meaning. Um, yeah. So that's something to also consider is, uh, that, you know, different, it, it, a lot of it depends on the way the waves are coming in. Um, I mean, I will say Moon Palace Royalton, unfortunately, they are, okay, so if Cancun comes down like this, this is where the airport is. This is the top of the seven or the top of the Cancun Peninsula. This is where Coco Balco is and all that kind of stuff. You go down to the bottom, that's where the airport is. In that area, in that corner, just, sorry, this way, just before, uh, the airport would be on the land side, uh, but just before where the peninsula juts out, 
the currents come up to that corner and it, that tends to drive in a lot of the seaweed into that area. Um, another area, like right in front of the Blue Bay Grand Esmeralda. Uh, unfortunately, you know, I, I know some people who just went, had a really good time. They actually have been twice now. Um, and they, I mean, you guys know, if you've ever looked online, Blue Bay Grand Esmeralda almost always comes up as the cheapest all-inclusive you can find. Um, they call themselves five star. Are they five star? No, they're not five star. But a lot of people are happy to stay there. Not if you're a beach lover. A, because of the way the currents come in, they're constantly getting beach erosion. And also with the seaweed, it does tend to gather in that area. So just bear that in mind. Um, but if you talk to your travel agent, I'm sure they already know these things. So, um, yeah, and, and as, as Angela said, you know, if you're looking at different areas, then regionally it can be completely different from one area to the next. So just do, you know, do bear that in mind um, that it, it can be quite varied. <clears throat> so off to Cancun on Monday. I'm super excited. I'm going to show you as much as I can and share that with you. Um, uh, and if there's anything you want to see, let me know. Um, I'll post the, the the show preview thingy, the thumbnail, for the video uh, right after this. Um, you can go in and add your comments. Uh, add them at any time up until showtime. And then once I'm on, then I will still see your comments. But anything that you post between now and then, um, it I can see those comments. So what's great is that uh, if there's anything in particular that you want to see, I don't care how crazy your question is. If I can find out the answer, I will. So if it's some obscure type of tequila that you're looking for, um, whatever, do not be afraid to ask the questions. <clears throat> and I will, I will see if I can get the answers for you. So hopefully you enjoyed the show. If you, uh, you know, <clears throat> you guys know the drill. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And I'll oh, do that right there. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Uh, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos. Hit the bell if you want to get notifications so that you don't miss out when I'm going live. If you are a channel member, then I will also be going live a few bonus times and showing you some behind the scenes stuff, that kind of thing. Um, so especially if you're a channel member, then let me know and I will, um, and then that way you will automatically get notified if I'm live. And you know, you know, it doesn't mean that you're necessarily have to drop everything and watch it right away, although I would love it if you did. But if you don't, then, um, you know, it's uh, something you can always tune into later and check it out. So thanks for popping by today. And I um, hope you guys have a great week and we will see you next Wednesday. Bye for now.